Hey guys. So, I really didn't want to make this video until I saw one of Air's new uploads, and I read through some of the comments. This will serve as my response to these comments, and just the general attitude of the community towards the nerf to swords coming in the next Destiny 2 patch. The amount of nonsense people are spreading about this nerf is frankly ridiculous, and sometimes extremely toxic. Not that YouTube comments have ever been known to be toxic before, <laughs> right? So, shall we get into it? Uh, first off, I'd like to start with a minor gripe about how people calculate DPS and Destiny in general. Namely, I feel it's much more accurate to calculate DPS over a static duration than comparing based on a certain amount of shots or reloads. There's nothing inherently wrong with having a different methodology than mine, however, it's plainly obvious to me that comparing one weapon that has a high burst over 2 seconds and one with a high sustain over a 15 second combo, it just doesn't make any sense. Yet, these numbers are what spread throughout the community constantly. One great resource I use for DPS checking is Sky Warrior's Damage Sharp Madness Sheet, which I'll link that in the description. This has a separate column for burst DPS and sustain DPS for almost every weapon in the game. It's ridiculous, and it's really nice to have. While there's some key limitations to this sheet, it's very accurate for the most part, and very helpful in making builds. One of these main limitations I focus on is that it doesn't show any combination of weapons, it just shows one weapon at a time. And as any endgame player knows, combinations have been the meta for a long time. So this is why I started testing DPS myself, and started creating my own spreadsheets, which I have shared to a few Discord servers for the most part. So let me explain my methodology in testing. So for every weapon combination, I set a limit of a certain amount of time. For this example, I'll use 15 seconds, as it's the most common DPS time frame for bosses in Destiny 2. In that time, I'll record myself using whatever weapon or combination of weapons and count how many shots were fired in that 15 second window. I only account for damage that actually hits the target in the window. That way, I can account for like rocket travel time, for example. And there have been some example clips in the background throughout this video just to show roughly how I work. One key detail to keep in mind this is a practical way of calculating DPS, and thus human error is always going to be a factor. For this reason, I always use Sky Warrior's chart as a baseline to compare against. It's also good to keep in mind, since I'm limiting myself to a specific time frame, some DPS values will actually end up higher than the DPS chart, because it's going to fall between the average and the burst DPS columns. After I get all of the recordings done, I record the damage values for each weapon, making sure to have any headshots since Kali takes twice as much damage to the head compared to most bosses. Also for any RNG dependent weapons like cluster bomb rockets, I take a sample and average those. Finally, I multiply the damage by the number of shots and divide by the time frame to get the DPS value over that time. To address one important criticism I have even of my own work, I could remove the human error by simply using the fire rate to calculate the maximum amount of shots that are possible, instead of manually testing each combo. But this opens up a lot of variables such as weapon swap speed, and it's hard to tell how travel time or damage over time will affect the DPS when doing this. So back to my criticism on errors video. I have no issue with his calculations. His numbers are very accurate when using the Colossus instead of Kali. My primary issue is that he claims that swords are not good for DPS currently, and then he compares them to other heavies, yet none of them even come close to the sword DPS. He claims in the video that other weapons are better, but doesn't list a single example other than hot swap slugs, which absolutely are better but I'm going to save that point for later. 
In fact, in watching his other videos, I could only find two weapons that he claimed had higher DPS than swords. Both were improperly tested. Eyes of Tomorrow was tested against a major, so it did double damage, so it's not applicable against bosses. And Cloud Strike was tested under a bug, which has since been fixed. So basically what Error says in this video is that hot swapping slugs gives better DPS than swords, and therefore swords are not overpowered. Now this obviously makes no sense, as hot swapping is obviously unintentional, and swords come out on top of every other heavy. To prove that, here's some of the top values in my DPS chart for this season. Note how the worst whirlwind sword is still better than the next best option, and how the best sword is roughly 20% higher than the next best option. Swords are obviously overpowered. Even my terrible Steel Sybil roll puts out more DPS than almost every weapon in the game. I saw non-stop comments on this video that the only swords that are good are Laments and Fallen Guillotine, and that's just demonstrably false. Heck, if Crown Splitter weren't Sunset, it would have even higher DPS than both of those. Now, obviously, there's one value that's more broken than swords, but that doesn't mean that swords aren't overperforming and that they don't need nerfed. And next I'd like to show you something that I've been working on yesterday. I took the sword values, accounted for the nerf next season, and then I also accounted for the rocket launcher buff, and that gave me this update to the chart. So there's some very big takeaways I'd like people to get out of this chart. First off, Yes, a badly rolled sword will no longer be viable. However, a well rolled sword, or lament, still are in the top 5 weapons I've tested. And I tested all of the top combinations I could find. Even a steel sibyl with whirlwind comes in above xenophage with actium, which I'd definitely say is still viable. The sword nerf just brings them in line with everything else, and allows for better balance, which is obviously a good thing. Second, the rocket buff actually opens up a really nice combo with Izanagi, which puts out pretty massive DPS and is a pretty fun combo to use, in my opinion. Lastly though, and most importantly, these sandbox changes only further show the massive issue that hot swapping slugs cause. After the sword nerf, hot swapping slugs is 50% better than the next best option, and that's absolutely ridiculous. I understand that it takes more skill to pull off this combo, and heck, I even think that it's fine being the best DPS in the game, but it shouldn't be this far ahead. It's obviously unintentional, and I definitely would not be surprised at all if Bungie's been working on a fix for a while, or planning a massive nerf to both Slugs and Anarchy. So what are the key takeaways from this entire video? One, swords previously were completely outclassing every heavy and common DPS combo in the game, except hot swap slugs. Two, this nerf brings good swords in line with other top tier options and bad swords in line with other medium tier heavy options, such as 1000 voices and sleeper. Three, hot swapping slugs completely breaks the balance of the game and should not be used as a comparison to other weapons. It's obviously unintentional, and hopefully they'll fix the underlying issue rather than nerfing slugs to the ground. It's pretty obvious that these changes are not just arbitrary nerfs because too many players are using Lament. They're balancing the sandbox, and the numbers definitely show that they're in the right. Now like I said earlier in the introduction, my methodology is definitely open to human error, so this will not be a 100% accurate study. However, other DPS tests plainly show a similar outcome to my own. Thanks for sticking with this video if you made it this far. Please leave a comment if you have any critique or anything really. Well, anything except telling me to drink water. <laughs> Which, I still don't understand that comment. I hope you enjoyed this trip through DPS testing and hopefully got something out of it.